We sat in an isolation chamber to see how we might endure the vast blackness and silence of space. I heard a steady stream of conversation on my helmet headset. They spoke in urgent whispers. Tell us about your background. What kind of home life did you have as a child? Why do you want to do this? Are you suicidal? I don't remember my response. A minute later, I was escorted into the chamber. Ready to go, I said, and the crew bolted the hatch into place. The voice of mission control came through the headphones to report on my activities as programmed. Dark. Large patches of black started to float in my vision. The capsule started taking on water, and I wondered what I'd gotten into. Darker. The black patches painted my vision down to nearly nothing. And darker. And the world rapidly disappeared. You are surrounded by complete and utter darkness. You are floating in a tank of water the exact same temperature as your body. You are here of your own free will. You are in no danger, but drips of water creeping in could be distracting, and your breath as you inhale, exhale, Inhale, exhale, relax.
Suddenly, I saw around the capsule a huge field of tiny yellow stars. There were thousands of them. I had crossed onto the wrong side of some invisible barrier. I might not make it back.
take weeks or months or years to kill you, whatever it is. You will struggle against your fate, quite possibly at great expense, and eventually you will lose. But in the meantime, if you live long enough, you will become used to the idea that you are going to die. You won't become relaxed about it, not exactly but eventually you will stop thinking about it quite so often. Entire hours will pass when you will forget that you are dying, and you will think instead about things like having enchiladas for lunch, and whether you are satisfying your partner sexually. And then, when the threat of imminent doom has become a part of the constant emotional background of your life, like the hum of the air conditioner in your house, you will die. Statistically speaking, this will most likely happen when you have already lived longer than most human beings who have ever lived on the earth. However, you will still probably feel that you weren't given enough time, that there were still things that you wanted to do with your life. But let's face it, you really weren't using your time on Earth very effectively anyway. You really only work hard for about one hour for every ten that you are paid for, and even then you're only moderately good at your job. On your days off, you sometimes do something useful or memorable, but mostly just sit in front of the television or the computer or a book and stare and wait until it's time to work again. And when you do go back to work you immediately begin waiting until you have time off again, even though you've already forgotten what you did over the previous weekend. And so you spend most of your precious life waiting. You wait for the train to take you to work. You wait to get off the train. You wait for the elevator. You wait for your floor. You sit at your desk and wait for the meeting. You sit in the meeting and wait for lunch. You eat your lunch and wait to go back to work. You sit at your desk and wait to go home again. You sit at home and wait until bedtime. And then you sleep until it's time for you to wait again. And while you wait, you think. Despite being one of the oldest, healthiest, wealthiest, and most educated human beings who has ever lived on the earth, your thoughts are not very different from those of your primate relatives. Mostly you think about where and what to eat, and whether you have to go to the bathroom, and whether people really like you as much as they pretend to, and how long it will be until someone else touches your genitals, or, failing that, how long it will be until you can get enough privacy to touch your own. And sometimes, while you're waiting, your mind goes back to the time when a cross-country move finally forced you to drive to the storage space you had rented for all of the stuff you had bought but didn't use, and you remember feeling lighter and more free with every item you threw away, as though everything you had bought had some subtle spiritual way to it. A weight that had accumulated so slowly that you didn't notice it until it was suddenly lifted. And for a moment you felt like dancing, just to feel, and celebrate, the lightness of your own body, but you didn't because other people were around. You remember looking at your old green blender. It worked fine, and in fact was almost new, but it just wasn't as good as the slightly newer blender you had, and besides it didn't match the new curtains. 
and you looked at the blender and you thought about the fact that it cost you $45. At the time you bought the blender you were only making $10 an hour, so the blender was roughly equal to four and a half hours of your life. And that's not even counting the hour it took you to drive to the store and buy it. And yet you were going to throw it in the back of your rented truck and throw it away. And you would feel happier throwing it away than you had when you bought it in the first place. Somehow you had convinced yourself that it was a good idea to spend four and a half hours of your life obtaining a blender that you were happier not owning. It wasn't the blender's fault. It was a good blender, but the realization made you feel as if somehow curtain had pulled back and you had seen something secret, something that you weren't supposed to know. And looking at the storage space now you saw, not a pile of things, but a pile of thousands of hours of your life. And you were going to collect all of those hours and give them to charity or throw them away. Now that you know that you are dying, you try to convince yourself that you realize the value of all of those discarded hours. But you don't. You are still spending most of your time on trivial and uninteresting things. And if you had those hours back, you would almost certainly spend them as you did before. Waiting. <laughs>